Well, that took a little while, but I got all my lines pushed forward on the maintenance yard. A Chevy Suburban, but it didn't give me the normal Suburban logo when I first got into it. It said something about Z71. That's a new one on me. Jesse's rolling right in front of me. On foot. Headed to a pull star. And for some reason, we're we'll putting a line with the clean gas cars. Oh, looks like Jesse's got that handle. I don't have to worry about it. See, I got all my uh, all my maintenance lines pushed forward, and almost have the gatekeeper cleared. I got two cars at the far end of the gatekeeper. One of them's a Shelby, so that one I will not be touching, other than putting an ad on it. I won't be driving it. They didn't say I couldn't touch it. They said I couldn't drive. I'm sure I could easily get Barry to tell Rob that that doesn't apply to me. But yeah, I kind of like the whole, no, nah, I don't move those. It's sort of become a malicious compliance sort of thing for me at this point. There's also one sitting in front of it. When I moved my last vehicle, I was just... It just made more sense to come and get into a clean and head up here and see how much damage has happened since the, in the roughly 45 minutes. Actually, more like an hour since I left this area. It's 9.07 right now. Actually, it's been a little over an hour since I've been up here. So I forget how many, if any, vehicles were left in this slide when I was last up here around an hour ago before my lunch break. But there are six now, and Mercedes just moved this one up. It's another one of the Ford Explorers with the recall safety stop code on the window. I'll put this with the rest of them. Of course, my my decision is, do I put it in the empty spaces that were created in the front with the few that got removed today, or do I continue to pile them up in the back? I think until further notice, I'm going to continue to pile them up in the back. Just in case whoever's handling this project is making a note of VIN numbers as they're lined up or anything of that nature. Most likely they're not, but... There's always that chance. And, and it could be that they're just leaving them positioned the way they are just so they can easily at a glance tell how many have already been sent off to Fort. So uh, I saw a couple more vehicles in the gatekeeper when I was sorting them out after lunch. They were done by the guy that uses the black marker on the windows. Somebody needs to get that guy a white paint pen or like a yellow paint pen, anything other than a black marker he's using. I mean, maybe it's legible in the bright light of the car wash, but when I'm sorting these cars out in the gatekeeper, it's not legible at all. Um, the funny thing is both of them I got in was able to determine what the issue was by looking at the dashboard. And then as I was getting out to grab the hat and I looked out the side window, from inside the car, I was able to see the black writing and read it, which, yeah, by then it, it doesn't really make a difference. I've already figured it out. I mean, I guess it saved me a little work. I saw enough that I, uh, I saw enough of it that I decided not to label window myself. So there's room for four more Ford Explorers over there. I just got some kind of a Kia SUV crossover sort of thing. 
<laughs> I didn't look to see what bottle it is. I'm heading into that part of the night where it's going to become a challenge to find a ride up to my maintenance lines. All right, now I'm in some kind of a Nissan SUV crossover thing. Kind of a bigger one. Okay, it's Dustin Lynch on Camel Country needs to go away. 94.7. I always find it weird when there's presets set for the radio. They just go to static. 94.7 is nice and close to 94.5. So. I'll put that on that preset and then try to find something that's not a lawyer ad. 94.1, preset 1 is at 93.9. I don't think there's anything on that frequency. So put 94.1 there. Get in motion. Actually, the back of the seat's kind of at an odd angle. There we go. Up down crew rolling in front of me right now. Trying to take my time going forward so they're a nice safe distance in front of me. This one's an F stop, so I'm taking it all the way to the uh, PM line. And after that, I probably better hustle right back up here. And as I said before, it's getting to that time where uh, I can't always count on a vehicle drive up and I still have several cars sitting in the Hertz maintenance line and God knows what I got sitting waiting for me at Dollar. So a couple of things that I discussed with Chris when I talked to him earlier, as I mentioned I talked with the shop manager Chris earlier. Um, one of the things, one of the other things he told me about the big Ford Explorer recall is that we've already got a couple back from the dealership. So at this point, every time I see a, an Explorer, I have no way of knowing if it needs to be flagged as a safety hold. I just kind of got to trust what's written on it because we do have some that have been fixed now. Granted, only two, but as the days progress, there's going to be more. The other thing he told me and this is the most relevant thing, in fact, it was the whole reason that he was trying to get my attention, is the, he wanted me to move the Nissan Rogue that I had moved into the shop line, over to the tire line, he said it was in the wrong line. And that was, um, yeah, that was me that moved it there, so. As a general rule, if there's an F-stop or PMs written on the window and something that would put it in the pink line, the pink line takes precedence and goes there. Uh, ditto if it's a tire issue plus um, something that would put it in the pink line. But apparently the exception to that rule is a, an I-stop MM inspection. Because apparently it can't go through the MM inspection until whatever the tire issue is is resolved first. And the tire guy is different than the regular shop guys. So I moved it back and uh, now I know. I try to learn something worthwhile every day. Well, it's 9.26 p.m. and it happened for the first time tonight that I came over from the maintenance yard across the car wash and there's no gas cars available for me to take up um, so I went over to the dirties and found something that wouldn't be out of place over a dollar it's a Ford Ooh, those brakes don't sound great those brakes don't sound so good at all um,
Now, I don't know if this is a, um, I don't know, it's some kind of SUV crossover thing. It doesn't matter, it's got uh, 61,000 miles on it, so. I'm going to do like Meyer told me last night and take this over to the dollar returns, providing there's something in the dollar maintenance line for me to bring back. I mentioned that I was doing that Sunday night to Keontae this afternoon when we were working together. And he said that, yeah, sometimes he did that when they were piling up over there. And that's, yeah, he was working alone and that's how he needed to get over there. But that's a maneuver I've never heard of before. I'm on AM radio with this, and I don't know how to change it. So yeah, five vehicles in my Hertz maintenance line, but the first time I've gone over to a dollar in about an hour and a half. Actually, more like an hour and forty-five minutes. What if I can pick up twelve sixty? Yeah, not really. I can kind of hear some guitars in the background. cars over here in dollar, so I definitely made the right move. Not a bunch, but three. Something I definitely needed to get over here and get on. Brakes don't sound good on this. Part of me wants to make a note about it and put it in a maintenance line, but I don't know. They don't sound awful enough, but I think I need to do that. All right, this is a Ford Edge with a big old vertical screen, and I can hear it already playing some uh, Simon and Garfunkel. I love this song. Art Garfunkel's never sounded better. So I got a windshield crack on this one. Big windshield crack. Which means I got a nice long drive. All right, we got another Hertz customer heading out to check out with their headlights on. Come on, people, turn your headlights on. that radio. More music in less than three minutes on the wow factor. 95.1 and 94.9. I love this. Two places to hear the wow factor. Mason Williams. Nice. There's a lot of people renting cars right now. Must be a bunch of late flights coming in. Wild seeing that many people waiting over at President's Choice and so few vehicles over there. It's definitely a problem, but it's not my problem. My problem is I'm off in about an hour. And I've got two more vehicles at Dollar and five more vehicles at Hertz that I need to get downstairs. And it's debatable when I get back to the uh, up-down area lot on, on this side of it car wash if there'll be a vehicle, 
vehicle available for me to drive up. For those who don't know, this is classical gas. One of the first pieces of music ever to have a music video. And the music video is pretty intense. It's a high high pace, high speed slideshow of some of the greatest works of art of all time. I'll try to remember to put a link in the description. Oh damn. There's a whole bunch of pop trunks over the over here in the glass area, and I can't believe nobody told me about this. Wow. Well, I got my work cut out for me over here. Because with PC empty, this is what I need to be focusing on. Alright, so I'm getting going on these cars in the glass area that have the pop trunks. I'm really wondering how long it's been like that. So I did go through that area earlier and there were no pop trunks. I think I did anyway. Just bewildered nobody told me about that. I mean, I talked to Chris. You'd think if it was done then, Chris would have mentioned it to me. Anyway, the first one was a Volvo, gas-powered Volvo. So I put that in the kickouts. And I caught somebody, a car washer, put in the truck in the gatekeeper line. That had a check engine light on. He apologized for not having a pen. I told him, you know, no problem. As long as you let me know what it is, I know I know what it is. And I wrote it down and put it away. And I grabbed the second car, and it's a Nissan sedan. Could be an Altima, could be a Maxima. I've said before, I can't tell these things apart. But it's got 90,000 miles on it. That just screams dollar thrifty. So seems like a perfect opportunity to me to take this over to the returns so it can be taken down to the car wash over there and get another one of those maintenance cars that I left behind. I think I left two behind over there. Hurts so low on cars right now, it kind of hurts. See what I did there. Wow, yeah, we, we got a hell of a rush of people renting cars right now. We've got three lanes open in checkouts, and all of them have lines. That's unusual, even during busy peak times. So, 944 at night, that's wild. So, we got a bunch of people over here, Dollar Thrifty as well. Oh, well, just keeping on my grind. So, I would have loved to have shot some video on the ride back to the maintenance yard from the uh, from the dollar thrifty maintenance line. But the groove was playing Sexy Dancer by Prince, and I know that would get flagged for uh, copyright by YouTube. I'm pretty sure it'd be flagged for copyright. Prince is one of those artists that I often have issues with if his music is in the background of my videos. But God, I was grooving to that. Never heard that on the radio before. All right, so this is a Kia, I don't know, some kind of SUV crossover thing, but it's got 8,000 miles on it, so this is definitely a uh, PC-eligible car, so I just need to get this to the flip ramp as quick as I can. 
or not the flip ramp my bad this is i'm coming out of the glass area again so it's it's dirty but i need to get this the kick out as quickly as possible and hopefully somebody down there is paying attention to what i'm bringing up and sees that this is something that they should move in and get washed and get up in a hurry <laughs> 